I'm Wayne Goodman, owner, operator, and founder of Blomo Gym America Corp. We can turn that Frankenstein you see in the mirror every morning into a Frankenstein. I'm not only the founder of Blomo Gym, I'm also a client. That's me. Live from Las Vegas, it's the Las Vegas International Dodgeball Open here on ESPN 8, The Ocho. channel if you're new here welcome so today I am so freaking excited to share with you this white Goodman makeup and costume tutorial anyone who has seen dodgeball probably knows that white Goodman is one of the most fearful antagonists of our generation so I thought what better spooky king to create on Halloween than white Goodman <coughs> so anyways if you guys are interested in recreating his makeup and his costume then just keep watching Hey guys, so to start off, I'm going to be showing you how to make his costume. You're going to be needing some EVA foam of two different thicknesses, some knee pads that I am personally using as shoulder pads, but if you have shoulder pads, great. I have a printout of the Purple Cobra logo, some scissors, a pencil, some liquid cement, some elastic bands to use for the straps, and a heat gun. Plus, my doggo's being like the cutest thing in the world, but you know, I'm just going to leave that up there for just a second more. So I'm going to be starting off by cutting out my Purple Cobra logo and I'm going to be gluing it onto the thinner piece of the EVA foam. Now personally, from experience, whenever this was finished, I would actually get two of the thicker pieces of EVA foam and glue this onto the thicker piece and then whenever we move on, gluing that onto the thicker piece again as well. Just because personally, I feel like this ended up almost being too thin and it pretty much just acted as if I glued the Purple Cobra onto one layer instead of how I'm trying to kind of layer it upwards and make it have more dimension and levels and have two layers. So it didn't quite work out as well. So I would personally recommend getting a thicker piece to do that just so it definitely looks a little bit more like a costume. So as you can see now, once that is done, I'm laying it on the thicker piece and I'm just going to be cutting out the area around the purple cobra. And then once I have that first half, I'm just folding it over so I can make it the exact same and just symmetrical on both sides. And so I'm just going to be cutting that out as well and then we're gonna have the piece to glue our purple cobra foam on to this black foam later on but before that I'm actually going to be taking an exacto knife and there are tiny little almost stitched indentations in his costume padding and so I'm going to be replicating that by just taking my exacto knife and just replicating those curved details onto it this way and I'm going to be doing it on both sides and just you know, just kind of replicating it as best that I can. Next, I'm going to be taking a mini foam dowel and I'm just going to be cutting this in half all the way through. And this is going to allow us to glue half of it flat on to this just to kind of give it a little bit more lift and make it more three dimensional. So I'm just going to be wrapping this around, gluing some liquid cement onto it and just adding this to the perimeter of the padding and I ended up using one entire dowel, but the pieces were cut in half. So it allowed me to be uh, very flexible with it and just definitely hold it down in place while it dries just because unless it is dry it might kind of start to move because this is on a curved surface so just wait until it completely dries and then move on to adding the next piece that is done I'm going to finally be gluing it down my purple cobra foam logo on to the foam base that we just created so I'm going to be adding a lot to the perimeter and then also the center of the purple cobra logo and then just going ahead and sticking that in the center of our padding Next, I'm just going to be cutting out a few oval shapes from the thinner piece of foam. This is going to be the first upper part of our 
shoulder pads that we're going to be making and then I'm just going to be laying this on top of the foam just so I can kind of get a size reference and I'm going to be making two larger ovals than the two that we just cut out and this is going to be the bottom part of the shoulder pads just so that it definitely kind of adds a little bit more dimension and definitely structure to the shoulder pads and makes it look bigger for sure. I'm then going to be gluing the smaller piece of the shoulder pad onto the larger piece and then I'm going to be doing that to the second one as well. And once that is done, you just definitely want to make sure that it dries and that they don't start to lift. So I actually went ahead and just put this under like a mat or something to make sure that they would just stick together while they're drying. And then once that is done, I'm going to go ahead and take my heat gun and start to heat up the center of this circle and then taking a ladle or some round object that you have, I'm going to be using this to shape it and make it round. And then once that is done, I'm going to be applying a little bit of my liquid cement onto the upper portion of the shoulder pad and then gluing it onto my knee pad that is also part of the shoulder pad. And I just went ahead and grabbed my mannequin form just to kind of help me with the placement for this part. So I just went ahead and just measured out where I want to put these straps to connect to the shoulder pads. And then I just went ahead and cut that out with an X-Acto knife and go ahead and insert my um, elastic bands and just went ahead and glued those together as well. A tip I have is because these do take a little bit of time to completely dry, I'll take a clothespin and just clip it together so that way it won't move and it can just fully dry. Next, we're going to be making the headband. I cut out a few sizes of the same exact logo that we used for the chest, and out of them, I just wanted to see which one worked best, and so I ended up choosing this size, which once again, I just threw this into Microsoft Word and just resized them and made copies. And so I actually got this bandana off of Amazon, so I will have that link down below for you guys. I'm just going to be, once again, gluing this onto a piece of foam and then gluing that piece of foam onto the bandana. It's super quick, super easy, and it honestly looks amazing. And it even ties at the back like White Goodman's does as well. Now, my bandana actually came in a pack of two and I didn't already have a sweatband, so I just quickly cut one and pinned it together and I'm going to be using this as my sweatband. Just a quick little DIY, these bandanas are kind of long, so you can use the same bandana and just kind of save some money instead of having to go buy a black sweatband. Next, we're moving on to White Goodman's purple Under Armour shirt. Now, here's the thing, I searched high and low for his Under Armour purple short sleeve shirt and they just don't make them anymore. So I'm going to be making my own. I got this purple shirt off of Amazon and since he is wearing a short sleeve shirt, I'm just going to be cutting the sleeves off and great thing, he actually has a long purple kind of armband on one arm. So we're actually just going to be cutting off part of the other sleeve for that and we have once again our purple armband. And since it is an Under Armour shirt, I'm just going to be tracing the Under Armour logo onto a piece of paper and cutting it out and then just taking some silver for Sharpie and coloring that before applying a little bit of liquid cement onto it and just gluing this to the little neck and you have your knockoff Under Armour purple White Goodman shirt. You know, what else could you want? Next, we're going to be moving on to the makeup application process. I'm going to start off by popping in some blue contact lenses and also my wig that I got from Amazon, which I can't help but feel like it makes me look like a mom hosting a book club. So we've got to fix that. I'm going to start off by cutting and creating a few sideburns by just taking these two pieces around the ear and cutting them to be shorter and then taking this gold colorista L'Oreal colored hairspray and this is amazing for this look. It definitely adds those highlights that White Goodman has in his hair because before it was just too dark of a brown. This definitely makes it look exactly like the hair that he has. And so I'm just going to be throwing a little bit of got to be glued hairspray into that and then arranging my headband slash bandana around the hair so that we have most of it flopping on top but then the sideburns are popping out underneath. Then I'm going to be taking my Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Foundation in medium neutral and applying this all over my face using my It Cosmetics Airbrush Blurring Foundation Brush and then just setting this with some of my Airspun Translucent Powder. I'm then going to be taking my Maybelline Brow Studio Brow Tattoo and just swiping this through my eyebrows and also around my eyebrows as well just to kind of help make them look a little bushier before moving on to my Too Faced Cocoa Contour Palette, taking medium cocoa and using this to just contour and chisel out my face a little bit more. And I'm even going to be trying to define the nose to look a little bit more like Ben Stiller's and look a little bit more masculine. 
I'm also going to be taking my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer and just bronzing up my face a little bit and even bringing that down to my neck as well. Before going into my James Charles Morphe eyeshadow palette, taking this nude color and just swiping this around my eye. And then also going into this taupe eyeshadow and applying this to my lower lash line. And then in a soft V around my eye and definitely make sure to blend this out. We don't want to look like we're wearing eyeshadow. We just kind of want to help change the shape of our eyes a little bit, which is where this dark brown eyeshadow is going to come into play. I'm going to kind of give myself a little bit of hooded and aged eyes up by the brow bone and just blend that out. I'm then going to be going into this banana yellow color and applying this all over the lid just to kind of help blend everything together. And I'm going to be going into this orange eyeshadow and applying this around the eye as well, just to kind of give a little bit more saturation. And then I'm going to be taking my Makeup Forever Dimensional Dark Brown and just tightlining my upper lash line and my lower waterline as well. I'm then going to be taking my Tarte Tardiest Lash Paint Mascara and lightly sweeping this through my eyelashes just to help darken them up a bit before going back into this orange color and I'm going to be applying this around the nose a little bit as well just because he does have a little bit of ruddiness around my nose and I'm going to be mimicking that and bringing that down to the chin and also kind of create a few little aged wrinkles under his eyes and also his butt chin as well. Next, I'm going to be going into this mauve red color, and by doing this, I'm just going to lightly use this to apply and pat onto my lips to give them a little bit of color before going into the mustache that we got from Amazon with the wig. And I swear, I just look like Tom Selleck, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going lightly going to be hairspraying this before cutting and trimming and grooming this to look way more like Ben Stiller's from Dodgeball. And honestly, you're going to be cutting off probably, I'd say, like 80% of this, definitely to just make it so much smaller because this thing was freaking huge. And the lace that was used on this was definitely very, very light, so I'm just taking my brown eyeliner and darkening that up a little bit just so it blends in with the rest of the hair before taking my Ben Nye Spirit Gum and applying this onto the mustache and gluing it to my face. Now, something to keep in mind is, once again, the lace that they used for these is kind of more like a cloth, so I'd definitely just be careful in gluing it because it does start to absorb it more than just laying on top, so definitely just kind of play it by ear and try your best. Now this is actually a step you want to do before gluing your mustache onto your face, but because I didn't know I needed it until now, you're going to be spraying your mustache with a little bit of that gold colored hairspray as well. And that is the completed White Goodman costume and makeup tutorial transformation. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see next. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my Halloween videos or some of my vlog videos as well. And anyways, with all that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Why are you so happy about LaFleur? None of this matters. Suck failure, freaks. Stick it in your ear, LaFleur. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Nobody!